Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. We're gonna take one more look at this sub $300 gaming PC and for those of you that don't know or you don't follow this channel, I'll go ahead and link a couple of those past videos in the description down below. But basically what we have here is a gaming PC that was built on a budget of just under $300. We have an E5 2420v2 is the processor that's 6 cores and 12 threads based on the Ivy Bridge architecture. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 ECC memory, which is actually one of the places we saved because ECC DDR3 is dirt cheap. We have a 120 gigabyte SSD, a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and then this graphics card is a reference RX 480, four gigabyte version, and all this came in at a price tag of $299 and change after you even count the Windows 10 key that I did throw on this thing. So I wanted to take a look at the CPU performance specifically, and to do that, we're actually gonna be looking at some synthetic benchmarks to see just how well this CPU performs and then sort of look at the data and give a couple of closing thoughts on this PC because hopefully, fingers crossed if nothing falls through, this guy is out the door this weekend. So I wanted to get a couple of last minute testing done before I do the factory reset, before I reinstall Windows, get this thing set up and ready to go to the lucky buyer of the system. Let's go ahead and give a couple of closing thoughts here on this system before it's out the door. And the biggest point of concern with building a system like this is definitely gonna be the single threaded performance. If you're into a lot of games that just don't take advantage of lots of cores or lots of threads very well at all, or possibly even at all, depending on how far back in gaming you go, this system may not be for you because it does feature low clock speeds compared to the consumer Ivy Bridge processors. And if you're relying mostly in your workloads on just purely single threaded performance, you're actually better off getting one of those consumer based you know, i3s, i5s, i7s from the Ivy Bridge generation. Now the good news here is this, more and more games are featuring support for more and more threads. So this six core and 12 thread processor, where it might not have been all that great at gaming about the time Ryzen was coming out in the first place, it actually may have gained a little bit of that steam back because games are actually looking at lots of cores and lots of threads as the new normal. So we're seeing developers start to really support more cores and more threads. Apex Legends is a great example of a game that actually takes really good advantage of lots of cores and lots of threads. And then pairing that CPU with the RX 480, in my mind, is about the best pairing I could have come up with here, especially considering the $70 I spent on this graphics card. I don't really think you can do much better. And this is a weird situation where there's not much of an upgrade path on the CPU side of things, but I'm not really sure you would even really wanna upgrade the GPU in this system very much because much beyond the four gigabyte RX 480, I really think we're gonna start to see the CPU bottlenecking the GPU pretty severely even at 1080p. Uh, I think the GPU is just gonna need more frames delivered to it and the CPU might not be able to perform depending again on the game that you're trying to play. However, with this pairing as it sits right now, I actually think it's a pretty good pairing because the GPU is not so powerful that it's driving hundreds of frames per second at 1080p and the CPU is just not powerful enough to push a lot more frames than the RX 480 here is delivering onto the screen anyway. So I think the pairing is actually fairly well balanced in most games, though depending on your use case, that may 
play ebb and flow a little bit maybe certain games it could use a little bit more gpu power and then on other games it could actually use a little bit more cpu power because that's the bottleneck Again, though, I actually think it's fairly balanced, and for $300, this is a really nice gaming PC to get yourself started in that direction. If you're looking for an entry point into the gaming PC space, it's a really good way to test the waters without fully committing with a five to $800 uh, brand new rig. You can pick these up, you can pick all the parts up, almost readily available at the $300 point, you could definitely do this PC, and I'll leave the parts list down below as well, but you could definitely bill out this PC for $320 pretty much all day long. So of course, one last time, I wanna know your guys' thoughts on this particular PC. Keep in mind the case itself, uh, if you found an old case laying around, you could save some money on it there because this does feature a tempered side glass panel. Uh, so it's not the cheapest case in the world, but it's also not by any means an expensive case. It was like $30 plus shipping brand new from Newegg. So it's actually, in my mind, a really good value case. I think it looks like a great PC. It actually performs like a really solid 1080p PC. I want to know what you think about this type of build in those comments down below. And as always, if you like the video, hey, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things help out a lot. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware. This is probably the last time you'll see this PC because we're going to get on out of here.